Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to our session on September Current Affairs. As I have promised you, we will be giving monthly current affairs from September till Feb. After Feb, we have the weekly current affairs magazine available, which will also try to compile whatever has happened in those weeks. Now, as there is a backlog from September till Feb for this particular exam, we will be focusing on these areas one after the other. The major focus of this issue will be from the point of view of prelims. Wherever there are issues which are important from both prelims and mains, I will be showing you and we will be seeing those topics in detail. But if there is any topic which requires detailed analysis from mains point of view, we are going to keep those topics aside and we will be making a separate videos because from mains point of view, whenever we are looking at any aspect, detailed analysis of that is required. For example, when I take topics like GST and all, from prelims point of view, some understanding is required. From mains point of view, also understanding is required. So those topics we will be doing now itself. But if there is any bill or act which is associated only with mains, then we will be focusing mostly from the mains point of view. Hardly there are some three or four topics over a period of five months or six months time, which is there only for mains. Most of it will be there in prelims only. So we will be covering, but one or two issues, if it is missed out, those we will be covering later. This is what we just want to inform you before you begin with this session, right? And here we have tried to analyze different newspapers, different magazines available in the market, along with our own content, just to ensure that we are not missing any topics that are actually required from exam point of view and at the same time I just want to tell you one more thing that whenever any topic is from standard books like Lakshmi Kant then I would say that please look at that particular topic from Lakshmi Kant itself where I won't be entering into giving you the analysis of that particular issue but if you require detailed analysis of that topic because you did not understand the basics of that, please write it to us. Especially you can write it in the comment section itself. If possible, we'll try to make a video out of it. If you are not understanding, if it's only you who is not understanding, then personally also we can help you with that particular topic which we will be dealing here, right? And there are some issues which have been there from September, but even in March, you can see some issues like Aadhaar and all. There, I have clearly told that wherever those type of information is repetitive and if it is there in further books or in further months, then we will be asking you to look at that particular month. So what you should do now, when you are actually listening to this, the content, whatever you have, apart from this content that I'm giving you, please have a white sheet where you can try to write other related topics that you need to read with respect to that particular topic as well. Right, guys? So let's quickly begin with the September current affairs. In September, one of the major issues which we all observed was with respect to police reforms. As I have already showed you in our first magazine itself about the seven directives of police issue, it is very important for you to look at this. The police reforms is actually from mains point of view. So please be careful and try to write separately. It is important from mains and you're going to read about it. Then the other important topic is about Aadhaar. Right? At that time, there was discussion going on. Even now, there is discussion. What are the problems and benefits of Aadhaar? As we have seen already in the last week magazine about the Aadhaar issue, my suggestion to you, please ensure that you look at it. Other particular information with respect to Aadhaar, like how many digits are there on your Aadhaar number? 
right something of this sort try to look at the aadhar card and try to see some issues or some factual data related to aadhar as well right it is given by government of india not given by the state government there are 12 digits please try to look at all these aspects carefully once right then from prelims point of view one important topic that is required is coastal economic corridor which the government is planning from kolkata to tutikon so if we actually take the national highway 5 which was earlier national highway which was also called as national highway parallel to east coast right this national highway as it was moving parallel to east coast it was also called as east coast highway right now there is a plan to develop an economic corridor along this so upsc in prelims may ask you about this the new national highway name for this is national highway 16 right please try to remember the new national highway name it actually passes through the chilka lake as well these type of informations can be asked near to chilka lake it doesn't pass on it then recently there is development or investment by adp from visakhapatnam to chennai along this east coast actually they want to do it from kolkata to tutikon but now in between they are doing from chennai to visakhapatnam in this stretch adb is investing so upsc may ask you a question about the east coast highway and as people will be knowing only the earlier national highway number and not the new one they may ask you with respect to the new one as well so please be careful about this topic as well and from prelims point of view other important topic is with respect to global competitive index which is actually given by world economic forum you know that from last 3 or 4 years upsc is actually focusing on this type of informations that is they are giving different reports and asking you to talk about who actually released it please be careful whenever they are asking you any particular index they are not asking randomly so please don't by heart all the indices that are there and who all will give it rather than that i would say look at certain important issues that are there in the newspaper and discussed over a period of time and if you can remember only those it is enough no sir i am comfortable in remembering almost everything i would say please go ahead and do that but over a period of time that is when we are going across all these months we will be showing you most important indices which you should remember at any cost then the next important issue is with respect to saksham 2017 what exactly is this saksham is actually creating awareness by different departments if you have read saksham with respect to one particular department for example if it is with respect to ongc mass awareness campaign for better health and environment and securing the availability of oil and gas for future generation or you might have read saksham with respect to ugc measure for ensuring the safety of women so saksham stands for creating awareness based on the particular departments so please don't get confused with that term recently the ccea has approved the indirect tax network which it will help in implementation of the gst it is also focusing on digital india so based on this it wants to create awareness about that that is a saksham program which it has done so please be careful whenever you look at this don't get confused that different books are talking differently about this particular topic right so ongc ugc and many other departments are actually looking into it whenever we ask students about the question on this they actually got confused and different students wrote about different programs mainly because of this so we went through all the departments and found that these three departments are actually looking at this particular topic so after this the next topic that is important for us is with respect to a higher education finance agency which is actually created by the ministry of hrd as it says this agency is actually meant to increase or improve higher education in the country for this it is trying to give a major push for the creation of 
high quality infrastructure in premier educational institutions so how exactly it will be done it will be jointly promoted by an identified promoter such as a bank or nbfc and then the ministry of hrd both will come together and try to improve the infrastructure especially for increasing the innovativeness again this is important from prelims point of view or you can use this when we talking about improving infrastructure in higher education sector in mains as well then the other important issue is actually with respect to the sdg index sustainable development index on health right this is very very important this is the new indicators which has come up sweden got first and india has got 143 out of 188 they may directly ask you in sustainable development goal index what is the rank of india and some factors which they actually consider is the malaria under 5 mortality and on safe hygiene practices so in these factors india is performing fairly bad and this has actually led to india's rank being at a lower grade the next important topic both from prelims and mains is actually with respect to the marrakesh treaty there are several treaties that are been done in marrakesh the most important one for us this year is actually with respect to the world intellectual property organization what does it do or what does it tell see there are several books which are actually available in the market some books are very important for research or some books are important for the programs of the blind people as well but as these books are not available for these people to read in braille and if any government for example there is a us author book and if indian government has to make it available to the blind people in india then usually the american author may not allow or the american copyrights may not allow at that point of time it will be very difficult to make it accessible for a person with print disability so to ensure that in the treaty of copyright there should be a provision to allow the countries or companies to go for braille type of books even though it has copyright is the marrakesh treaty with respect to the world intellectual property rights organization this is an year where we have seen enough information with respect to the disables there was a bill which was being tabled and in india there are several measures that are been taken by the government with respect to this you can actually remember the sugamya pustakalaya of the government of india which it is actually planning in economic survey we actually saw accessible india camping where in every government department there will be some measures taken just to ensure that the disabled people can easily come and access the things there right from all these point of view it is very very important for us to know about the disables so here you have to see economic survey where the accessible accessible india campaign is there it is also given in india yearbook properly so you have to read about the different schemes of the government of india with respect to disabled for this year one factual information which may be important for you for mains is that india is a member of this and india has 63 million visually impaired people and 8 million are blind so because of this this treaty is very important for majority of our population in india right so let's look at this carefully there can be a question on this at any time the next important topic is actually with respect to the mission parivar vikas it is highly improved family planning services which are planned in up bihar rajasthan mp chatisgarh jharkhand and assam where 150 most affected districts have been chosen and there they are actually going for this one of the major problem with the recent family planning initiatives is that as majority of the people are going for mass family planning operations you might have observed that large 
vasectomy deaths are also happening i have actually shown you in the first magazine itself about the problems associated with this so please ensure that you are talking about different measures taken by the government with respect to that especially they may ask you in prelims about mission parivar vikas so please be careful they won't ask you about mission parivar vikas is implemented in which districts but they may ask you it is associated with what it is associated with family planning services right and the other important initiative of the government is aramb initiative where it is the first hotline to curb sexual abuse of children through the internet and they want to remove the child pornographic content online so this initiative tries to protect the children who are actually handled sexually and misbehaved on the internet platform so this initiative is also important from prelims point of view the next important initiative is actually with respect to nidhi that is national initiative for development and harnessing innovations they may ask you with respect to nidhi consider the following factors right one is promoting and accelerating young and aspiring innovators and startup support innovators to build prototypes of their ideas by providing a grant up to rupees 10 lakhs and an access to fabrication lab that is wherever innovators aspiring innovators or startups come up with new innovations then they will be given 10 lakh rupees grant and also some fabrication lab access will be given and the other important thing is the seed support system which provides up to 1 crore rupees per startup and is implemented through technology business incubators so upsc we ask you consider the following statements with respect to nidhi a and b most of it it remains same but they may combine promoting accelerating young and aspiring innovators or and they may actually combine these two as well they may mix the first statement and the second statement and they may give you so you may get confused and you may say it is right so please be careful this factual information with respect to nidhi is important it is more about increasing innovations in the country and if you are writing any question in mains with respect to increasing innovations and government measures nidhi is very very important scheme then some points from science and tech point of view there is something called as red line campaign the meaning of this is that nowadays we have seen that lot of antibiotics which is being produced are not working effectively against most of the bacteria fungus or viruses the main reason for this is that we are using these antibiotics so much that these organisms are getting accustomed to this because of this the government has come up with red line campaign where they have told that if these medicines have to be used then it has to be used only by doctor's prescription without doctor's prescription you cannot use this so this campaign is called as red line campaign so to reduce the virus or bacteria getting accustomed to any antibiotics is actually prevented through this particular campaign the second important thing is with respect to osiris rex it's a nasa's space probe to study asteroid bennu the question can be directly on this either they may ask you with respect to osiris rex that is recently the nasa's probe to study asteroid bennu is what or they may ask you about bennu and the option may be about the osiris rex so please be careful about it then the third most important one in science and tech is with respect to world's largest radio telescope or aperture that is actually seen or being installed in china's guangzhou province so this can be the question so which is or where exactly do you see the world's largest radio telescope they may give you china japan us and russia so please be careful it is when china and then there is something called as gia space probe it is a european satellite mapped 
it actually helps in precise position of stars mapping the precise positions of the stars mapping precise positions of stars high possibility they may ask you question about it please be careful science and technology prelims point of view all these are required next most important one is with respect to air pollution where they are actually talking about a carbon neutral airport in india none of us can ever think that delhi being so much polluted we can never think that igi in delhi is having the carbon neutral airport right it is what is the meaning of carbon neutrality that means over a period of time when we actually look at least for an year if we see the net carbon emissions and the net carbon absorption by the airport if it is one and the same then we actually call it to be carbon neutral so either the question can be on carbon neutrality or the question can be which airport is given the carbon neutral status right so these two are important the third most important thing is with respect to air pollution from environment and ecology point of view this year if there is any question that will be from the air pollution if you see india airbook or also the recent magazines that we have seen there are some eight particulate matters on which a study is being conducted to see whether a city is polluted or not i have also given recently the different colors which are actually associated with different areas to see whether there is any pollution or not it is very very important for you to read about air pollution this year at any cost then the other important topic is actually with respect to gangetic dolphins whenever the issue is with respect to ganga gangetic dolphin will be there in news already it has been asked but i just want you to tell that it is an endangered species so they may ask you whether it is endangered critically endangered vulnerable or extinct species it is endangered and the second important thing is it is not just found in ganga but it is also found in brahmaputra so this issue is also important from environment and ecology point of view then the other important topic is about a species called as lager falcon which is actually present near the rock cliffs in madurai south india but recently because of quarrying and falling of palm trees there are lot of issues usually seen with respect to this lager falcon numbers are actually reducing and everyone is actually worried about it because of that they may ask you a question on this so please be careful about it then the third important topic from the disaster management point of view is that we know that armed forces navy and air force actually comes and take responsibility whenever there is disaster management prakampana 2016 when we are actually looking at they are talking about disaster management exercise with east naval command it is at visakhapatnam between the andhra pradesh government and the east naval command we have already seen jal rahat was actually with respect to assam and the army right so questions like this are important please try to read about the joint exercises of not only the disaster management but also of several other countries as well right then we have to see three important paintings or arts from rajasthan one is with respect to the jogi tribal art of rajasthan bundi school of painting which is india's miniature painting is also from rajasthan natadwara painting from rajasthan all these were actually shown and they were in news so please ensure that you are remembering this they may ask you that which of the following are actually present or which 
of the following are from Rajasthan. So you have to be careful about it or they may ask you and match the following which one is wrongly matched. When it comes to Jogi tribal art, Bundi school of painting and Natadwara painting, you should remember that it is from Rajasthan. Over a period of time, in other months also, we will be actually looking at different issues associated with the culture where I'll be showing different art forms from different countries as well. So the next important topic is actually with respect to Ken Betwa interlinking. It is very very important mainly because for the first time there is interlinking of rivers between two states. Ken in MP and Betwa in UP. And in between this two there is actually Panna Tiger Reserve and some parts of this is also being submerged. So two questions can come. One is with respect to which is the first interlinking of rivers which are the two rivers for which interlinking has actually taken place. So it is Ken and Betwa. And they may also ask you between Ken and Betwa, which tiger reserve is actually present. So both these are important. Then the other important topic or question from prelims is actually with respect to the logistic performance index given by the World Bank. So please be careful. They may ask you a question on this as well. The next important topic is with respect to Niryat Bandhu scheme. Even when I spoke about the diary of events, they were talking about this. What exactly does this mean? There will be some officers in the foreign trade ministry who will be actually involved in mentoring the first generation entrepreneurs who are these new people who have come into the entrepreneurship if they want to export anything and if they need any help about the technical details in the field it will be actually provided by the person called Niryat Bandhu, right? So this is very, very important. And the other important thing is also with respect to market economy status. What exactly does that mean? Market economy status is actually granted by WTO. It is granted for a period of 15 years. Okay, so what is the benefit? If any country is given market economy status, then even though you know that the particular country is involved in dumping activities, you cannot calculate dumping of that particular country. So this is the market economy status. China has got the market economy status. So India and other countries are actually studying the impact of this. So I'll just tell it as per this agreement, to calculate the normal value of exported goods while adjudicating anti-dumping cases, the WTO member nations could ignore. What should they ignore? The selling price and the production cost. These two they should ignore, but these two are most important to decide whether dumping is taking place or not. So this is the benefit of getting the MES status. So that status is being given to China and that is the issue in the world, right? So the next important thing is with respect to BRICS declaration. They may ask you recently, there was a New Delhi declaration on education or of education. It is associated with which of the following organizations? The options can be BRICS, BIMSTEC, SARC, ASEAN. At that point of time, definitely you will remove ASEAN. But as you have confusion between these three, it will be very important for you to remember this. Then the next important point is actually with respect to Param Ishan. What is it? It is a supercomputer. So question can come. What is Param Ishan? So you should be careful. Then the other important question that can come on prelims is with respect to a joint military exercise between India and Kazakhstan that is Prabal Dustik. Right. So these are all important from prelims. And you have seen that lot of NGOs actually lost their foreign 
regulations that is they cannot get funding from foreign companies governments or people so this was the fcra provision it is important from mains point of view and we have covered it in the magazine as well so please be careful about this issue as well. right then we all know that september was the time when everyone was actually talking about the kaveri issue and as you are aware already in prelims the question was asked about the kaveri issue sorry the question was asked in mains 2016 about the kaveri issue but always remember even though some questions are asked in mains the same can be repeated in prelims as well so if we see kaveri issue first thing that we need to observe is with respect to the crop right why did tamil nadu ask water for it asked for the samba crop what is it it is a rice crop of tamil nadu which is more starchy or corny in flavor and when is this samba season it will be from august through jan usually whenever there is an issue upsc will not only ask you about the kaveri from geography point of view but they may ask you other factors associated with it so you should be careful right and then it is said that there is almost around 740 tm cft of kaveri water out of this it is in divided in this proportion and it is said that if there is decrease in the water content then even the water sharing has to be done on this ratio itself right and the kaveri water tribunal was started in 1990 and it gave its final order in 2007 but still during lean period there will be one or the other issue with respect to kaveri right as last year it was important please try to look at the tributaries of kaveri from geography point of view tributaries of kaveri is very very important and in ncrt books or in any of your geography textbooks you can actually look at it right the next important issue is actually with respect to non alignment movement as last year prime minister did not attend the non alignment movement usually we see prime ministers attending it last year it was not attended by prime minister modi because of this this issue is important this year has the relevance of nam reduce can be a question in mains but from prelims point of view few facts are important that is in 1955 several african and asian countries they came together and they decided at bandung that we should establish something for the third world countries against the nato and the warsaw pact right and then in 1961 belgrade summit of first summit was actually held with respect to non alignment movement please be careful 1955 bandung conference is said to be the first precursor of nam but the first summit was held at belgrade so upsc may actually ask you a question where was the first summit held they may give you bandung conference at that time it is wrong right and then 120 members and 17 observer countries are part of it initially it was actually started or thought of starting by five important leaders they are nehru from india sukarno from indonesia nazar from egypt kwame nkrum from ghana and tito from yugoslavia they may ask you a prelims based question about all these five to match properly the recent summit or the 17th summit was held at margarita in venezuela so this also can be asked so please be careful there can be a question and apart from this, as i told you we have to look at the bandung conference as well i have given the 10 principles of bandung conference which are actually important from mains point of view they may ask you directly what were the principles which led to the formation of nam first thing is respect the fundamental human rights 
and of the objectives and principles of United Nations. It wanted to say that it is not going against United Nations, but within United Nations, it wants an alternative voice from the P5 or the developed countries. Respect of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations, respect of every right of nation to defend itself either individually or collectively, non-use of collective defense pacts to benefit the specific interests of any of the great powers that is we will not join either Warsaw or NATO right and then they also talked about non-use of pressures by any country against any other countries and some other important Important areas are with respect to non-use of pressures by any country against other countries, refraining from carrying out or threatening to carry out aggression on any other country. That is, they wanted to establish peace, not just for the sake of powerful countries, but also within themselves. Peaceful solution of all international conflicts in conformity with United Nations. Promotion of mutual interests and respect of justice and international organizations. These were some of the major principles of Bandung Conference. Please ensure that if at all they ask you a question in mains about NAM. If you can write some of these points, you will get good score. Right. Next ones are with respect to important topic that we need to see is with respect to ASEAN. Every year one or the other question actually comes from ASEAN. We need to know some of the basics of it. Bangkok declaration actually led to the formation of ASEAN. ASEAN has how many countries? ASEAN has 10 countries. So if you start from India, you have Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam and then you have Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei and Philippines. So these 10 countries are actually part of ASEAN. This 5 countries plus India actually forms your Mekong Ganga cooperation. Bangladesh is actually not part of it. Right. Those things I'll explain you later. But what is more important for us is the first five countries which actually were part of ASEAN were these rare possibility. They may ask you a question about this. But ASEAN, when was it first formed? Bangkok Declaration 1967 can be asked. Right. And the other important issue is with respect to India, Vietnam. We are actually planning to increase our road connectivity from India, Myanmar, Thailand trilateral highway till the Vietnamese port of Da Nang. So this port is also important. Chabbar port in Iran, Gwadar port in Pakistan, Chittagong port in Bangladesh, Humbantota port in Sri Lanka, Danang port of Vietnam, all these are important. They may give you different ports and different countries and ask you to remember. So please be careful. India by the Nile festival and Egypt by the Ganga festival is with respect to India-Egypt relationship. Right. So this is important. Next, we also have to look at the East Asia Summit. So guys, let us see how exactly we have to remember this. I told you ASEAN actually has 10 countries and we saw these 10 countries. Right. There are three countries with ASEAN which actually have free trade agreement with ASEAN countries. These are Japan, China and South Korea. Is that fine? So together it is 13 countries. There are other three countries which has very good relations with ASEAN. They are India, New Zealand and Australia. So we have to consider all these 16 countries which is actually part of regional comprehensive economic partnership along with the 16 countries if i add us and russia then usually we get east asian summit so here it is a group of 18 countries and the first summit was held at 
Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia in 2005. Is India part of East Asia Summit? Yes. This was the question asked in UPSC earlier as well. So please be careful about these informations. About international organizations, usually the questions are which countries are part of it or when was it formed through which declaration or it can be with respect to where was the first summit held. Then, the other important topic in international relations is actually with respect to one of the major exercises between navies. That is passage exercise between the two navies, any navies. This was in news recently because Iran actually went for a passage exercise with Pakistan Navy. What is this? You will have two ships of the countries moving in opposite direction and during this time how well they can communicate with each other to ensure that whenever there is any sort of piracy attack on those countries or if there is any other issue how exactly they should come together and work right so passex any navy whenever it is working on the narrow passage movement of their ships it is actually called as passex Right. The second important thing is actually with respect to Russia and Pakistan military exercise. Everyone was worried about this. So here we need to look at the friendship 2006 ex exercise is actually between Russia and Pakistan. Right, guys. Then we also have to look at one of the major agreement which was actually discussed in the news. It is with respect to Afghanistan Pakistan transit trade agreement. The meaning of this is Afghanistan and Pakistan border, which is actually the Durand line. In between these two, the vehicles can easily move, was what was accepted by Afghanistan and Pakistan. But this agreement also told that it will provide transit only for Afghanistan and Pakistan, but not for any other country. Afghanistan actually wanted India to be part of it. As Pakistan did not accept for this, we are looking at an alternative route that is through Chabar port of Iran and at the border of Iran through this Zaranj Dilaram highway we actually plan to reach to Afghanistan right so these two are very very important for us right next important regional organization that we need to see is with respect to Hangzhou consensus that is the G20 recently you had in September about the G20 which focused on Hangzhou consensus where it was talking about coordinated macroeconomic policy because of the threat of Trump they were talking about open trade and innovation as well right when we look at G20 Initially, after the 1999 Asian financial crisis, the finance ministers and central bank governors of different countries, they came together and they actually met for the first time. So this became G20. G20 includes 19 countries plus European Union, right? Apart from this, if we are actually looking at this G20 became G20 Leaders Summit after the global financial crisis of 2008. So again, this information is also important. G20 is very, very important. Earlier, it was only G8 heads who used to meet. Now, Russia is out of G8. Now, it is only G7. Right, guys? So this is very, very important for us. Usually questions come on this. So let us see. So here, let us see which countries are actually part of this. So if I see G20 countries, let me start continent wise. Right. The first continent let me focus is actually with respect to North America. I have Canada, US and Mexico. All the three major countries are also present. Let me take South America. If I take South America, I have Brazil and I also have Argentina. Right? Then I finish two continents and I'll move towards Australia. 
right? So I also have Australia. Is that fine? Yes. So we saw six countries, right? Apart from these six countries, the other way to remember is the P5 countries which are actually part of it. That is, we have US, we have Russia, we have China, right? And we have UK and France. The P5 countries are also there. European Union as an organization is also present. Apart from the P5 countries, we can also see Germany and Italy, which are part of Europe present in G20. Apart from this, if you take Africa, it is only South Africa which is present, right? Apart from this, you have India, Indonesia, Japan, Republic of Korea and Saudi Arabia. I'll just help you to remember this easily. If we are actually looking at some of these topics, so I told you, you have US, Canada and Mexico, right? And then you have US, UK, then you have France, then you have China and you also have Russia. So how many? Eight countries are done. Now when I go to South America, I have Brazil, I have Argentina and Australia is also there. Correct? Then I have to move to Africa where I have South Africa. There can be a question. BRICS countries are actually part of G20. Yes. Right? How many are done? 11 countries are actually done. Right? Apart from this, if we see, we have European Union, we have Germany, and we also have Italy. Right? So how many? 14 countries are actually done. EU is there, Germany is there, and Italy is also there. Then if we take, you have India, you have Indonesia, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Japan, and you have South Korea. And then you also have Turkey. So we can remember these. You just need to remember the countries which are actually present in Asia. It is easy to remember. Come from West. You have Turkey. You have Saudi Arabia. Right? You have India, Indonesia, South Korea and Japan. So these six countries, if you can remember, G20 is easy. So at least try to know which countries are not part of it. High possibility there can be a question on this. Then the next important issue which was asked in mains and there is a possibility that it can be asked in prelims is actually with respect to Indus Water Treaty. So here the first thing that we need to observe is actually with respect to September 19, 1960 the year in which the Indus Water Treaty came into existence. At that time, it was IBRD or World Bank. Nehru and Ayub Khan actually signed this. According to this, three rivers were given to Pakistan, Indus, Chenab and Jhelum, And three rivers came to India, Satlej, Ravi and Bias. And according to this, even in this three rivers, 20% of the water can be used by the Indian government for irrigation, power generation and transport purposes. Here you should remember one thing, 20% of water can be diverted. So what happens whenever India constructs any project on the Indus River, then usually we see that Pakistan says that India is actually diverting more than 30%. Whereas India says we are diverting only 8 to 12% of this. So 
in this 20% usually we see there is some technical problems remember guys upsc may not ask you a factual questions only about this but they may ask you about the controversial questions as well the first one is actually with respect to kishan ganga hydroelectric plant it is actually a run of the river project the meaning of this is whenever a river is actually flowing if you construct a dam the water storage increases but in the run of the river when the river is flowing usually you construct a dam in such a way that there is no disturbance for the flow of the river so this is also important next pakistan is actually constructing the neelam jhelum hydro power plant downstream of kishan ganga so they say that india if it is diverting the water of kishan ganga then there won't be water available for pakistan's neelam jhelum project so that is why they went to the world bank for this and about the kishan ganga we need to understand that it enters into ular lake and at the same time we should be knowing that it starts at gariyas they may ask you the source of kishan ganga and where does it merge it merges jhelum near muzaffarabad at the krishan sir lake is also very very important for us right so these are some of the factual informations with respect to kishan ganga project which can be asked in exam right and you should be knowing about the ular lake and it's a right bank tributary of jhelum kishan ganga they may ask you questions about that. the next important topic we need to focus is actually with respect to jhelum river when we are looking at jhelum river we should know that it is the westernmost of the five rivers of punjab and it enters into chinab jhelum river is a tributary of chinab which meets at chinab at trimu and chinab in turn meets satluj and satluj meets indus at mitten coat this is important where does the satluj river meets jhelum or sorry where does the satluj river meets indus is at mitten coat so where is the origin of jhelum verinag spring tirpanjal ranges and it flows through valley of kashmir and through ular lake jhelum is a river and it the main significance of this is that in its youth stage it meanders meandering is usually seen only in mature and old stages but unfortunately because of the plateau or the plain which is there in the valley it meanders in its youth stage itself because of this meandering itself you see floods happening in valley of kashmir so this is very very important for you the last important information about the indus water treaty is with respect to chinab river here we have to know the different projects of india on this one is rattle project dulhasti dam and baglihar dam so they may ask you which of the following projects are being constructed on chinab river they may also include kishan ganga in that so don't get confused kishan ganga is not on chinab river it is on the kishan ganga river itself which is a tributary of jhelum so guys this is very very important or these are the topics which are important from prelims and mains point of view we have seen several questions from this which are there in mains 2016 itself this is the reason we say current affairs of last 3 months before exam is always important whether it is from prelims or mains point of view please try to read these issues carefully and revise them if you have queries regarding any topic please feel comfortable to contact us or please give us in the comment section what additional information is required for you we will be releasing the other months videos also quickly we will be releasing two two months videos in one particular day so that within Three weeks time, you will be getting almost all the information, and our target is to ensure that by May eighteenth, almost all the information, apart from 
the major topic that is maps will be provided to you so that you will be able to answer current affairs related questions effectively right thank you guys thanks for watching